Hi, I'm Lady Charmaine, and my guest today is a 27-year-old fashion designer from New York. She is the fourth designer to be eliminated from Lifetime's hit show, Project Runway. And she's here today to talk about her experience, and I want you to help me welcome Miss Gabrielle Aruda to the show. Welcome, Gabrielle. Thank you so much for having me. It's exciting to be here. Yeah, so you are one of the uh, designers that made it to season 14. So congratulations on that. I'm sure it was a long awaited and probably a nervous mm -hmm. process for you, but you made it. <laughs> How did it feel when you finally got that telephone call that you were going to be a contestant? It was a great telephone call, actually. I was like so nervous. And when I finally got the call, uh, the uh, producer did this like pause where she's like, I have some news for you. I was like, oh, my God, that doesn't sound good. And then she said I was on, and it was like this big sigh of relief. Oh, my goodness. So how did you celebrate? Well, did you holler? Did you scream? You know, how did you celebrate when you get that kind of news that you are going to be on a national platform and people will be able to see your work as a designer? You know what? I love to design, so designing for me is a celebration. Like, I was just exciting, excited to think about all the design possibilities and all the challenges. So for me... It was just about getting there. It wasn't about celebrating. It was about celebrating while I was there. <laughs> the challenges to me are like, you know, a present almost. Like a, a way to challenge yourself as a designer. And um, very few designers get that opportunity. So I was really just looking forward to the experience. So when did you find out that you wanted to be a designer and really wanted to make this a career? Um, actually, you know, it was a little bit later in life. I'd always been interested in sewing and fashion, but it wasn't until I was applying to colleges that I realized I was like, I don't want to do a traditional school. And I like Googled, you know, fashion schools, good. <laughs> and, you know, Parsons <laughs> came up and I applied and luckily I got in and that really like fueled my path and like opened up my mind because it made me fall in love with fashion and it made me realize that fashion is my voice. You know, sometimes I'm not as eloquent as I would like to be or, mm -hmm. you know, I don't come as across as well as I would like. And because um, I can be shy sometimes and, you know, people interpret that differently. But I always feel like with my fashion, I can at least have a strong voice. And even if it doesn't come out as well as I'd hope, at least my voice is being heard. So um, it took me until about college, though, to find that kind of place. Now, was this your first season ever trying out for the show? Yes, it was my first season trying out. Um I started my business about two and a half years ago, and it's been going so well that I was like, you know what, I need a challenge, I need something to possibly help my business, to help me as a designer, to make me grow, and I thought Project Runway would be the perfect opportunity for that. So, uh, did you hear about the audition? Did someone encourage you to audition, or were you a fan of the show? How did your audition process come about? Well, I was always a fan of the show. Um, I went to Parsons, so I was, you know, as a student, I got to see mm -hmm. parts of Project Runway being filmed there. Really? Um, originally. Yeah, there, it, it was mostly during the summer, but I, we were still able to see, you know, parts of the, the moving process in the background. So it was always in the back of my mind. Um, but uh, a producer had found uh, an article about me as an emerging designer, and they reached out to me. And it was actually a year ago, and I was in the middle of New York Fashion Week, and I was like, oh, my God, I can't even think about taking on such a huge <laughs> challenge of Project Runway. But the next season, you know, I responded back and I said, you know what, I'm in for it this season if you still want me. Because, you know, there's no time like the present, and uh, it just seems like a good challenge to take on. And, and the right time for me as well. See, thank God for the article, and they were able to find you through the article. So that was really good. Now, this challenge was a Mary Kay challenge that you really kind of struggled with in this challenge. What were some of the challenges um, that you were having? Because one of the things I noticed is that the hem on your dress was incomplete. And so you seemed a little frazzled yeah. on this one. Why was this one so tough for you? Yeah, it was difficult for me. I think designers actually struggle the most at Project Runway when it's a challenge they feel comfortable with. Mm. Because actually this this challenge is very much my customer and very much me as a designer. So I think I just in the back of my mind I thought, This is something I have. I don't I don't have to push myself too hard. I wasn't consciously thinking that, but in a little bit I was taking a okay, I, I got this, I'm okay, I'm cool and then I, I made mistakes, you know, I, I chose a fabric that was not the correct fabric at all. That jersey was absolutely horrible if you could even call it a jersey. And I made time management mistakes as well. It wasn't working. My scissors couldn't even cut the darn fabric. I should have given up on it hours ago. 
but ju- I just sat there saying, this is going to work, this <laughs> is going to work, eventually it'll work. And unfortunately, uh, time proved me wrong and it did not work. But, you know, it was a learning experience. And through that, through the whole experience, I think I grew as a designer. So that's what I wanted. So ultimately, I'm happy for my experience. And meeting all the other designers was, you know, a gift in itself. Mm -hmm. I I love them all. I respect them all. So, you know, even if I didn't get to the point where I wanted to be, I feel like this was an interesting challenge. And it made me realize not to, like, sit on my laurels in a way. And just because it's in my wheelhouse, I shouldn't take a back seat. I should push myself even farther to do something bigger and better and Mm -hmm. different than what I think you know, I shouldn't put myself in a box. And I think that's what I did. And I was incredibly stubborn and not good with time management. So <laughs> there was a multitude of mistakes made on my part. But Well, if you're just tuning in, you know. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, if you're just tuning in, I want to remind everyone that we are talking to Gabrielle Arruda from Project Runaway Season 14. Now, do you notice that some of the designers may move away from their design aesthetic because they're focusing on trying to please the judges and try to give them what they want instead of who that designer really is? I think that's a very easy trap to fall into Mm -hmm. because... You know, sometimes the challenge doesn't fit your natural aesthetic, and it's not something, you know, you wouldn't normally have used this fabric or that material, or you wouldn't design for that customer. And as a designer, you always need to keep in mind you should broaden your box and make your box, extend your box almost, so that your design fits with any challenge. But sometimes I think when we get stuck as designers, we think we just want a good feedback. We just want Mm -hmm. people to like it, you know, and that's a hard thing to do when you have very critical judges with very high expectations who actually just want you to be yourself, you can fall in the trap that I just want to please the judges. Mm -hmm. And that's the worst thing I think you can try to do. Because if you try to please them, you will probably fail Mm -hmm. because you you won't be doing you, you know? And um, I I think uh, although it's an easy trap to fall into, every designer should just try to stick to themselves and be themselves because it feels a lot better to go out on something that is actually you than it would to go out on something that you would say, I hate it, I would never wear it, you know. As many flaws in execution as my design had, my original concept, I still thought it could have had promise, you know. Was was it a little safe and a little pedantic? Maybe, but it could have gone somewhere good. And, you know, at least I say I see good elements in that. Mm -hmm. And if I had just tried to please the judges, I think I would have felt a lot worse about the challenge in general. My husband and I, that's what we were talking about last night when we were watching this show. You know, when you see designers trying to give judges what it is that they want instead of you just giving them who you are, like the other young lady from San Francisco, mm-hmm. they knew exactly who who she was when they saw that outfit coming down the runway because they're able to now see who she is. And so they know who she is um, as a designer. How difficult was it for you to stand up there and to hear uh, the, the judges' critiques about your outfit when you knew deep down inside you did not do a good job yeah you know it, it's it's difficult especially because my personality and I'm, I'm used to being a high achiever I'm used to getting good feedback I'm used to getting good critique so this was a challenge in and of itself just standing there and being very um vulnerable mm-hmm. um but I went on the show to grow so I wanted to hear the feedback it's just hard to take because you know even if you put your heart into it and it doesn't work out you still put your heart into it and you still, you know, gave it everything you could, Mm -hmm. you know, at no point did I ever just say, screw it. You know, it is what it is. I just, I I kept going to the last minute and I did what I could. And, um, you know, sometimes you connect with the judges and they understand your work and sometimes it's a myth and, you know, um, but I think if you're true to yourself, you can walk out of there with your head held up high. Yeah. Now, when you were standing up there and you heard the judges' critiques, did you have a feeling that you may be eliminated by what they were saying? Yeah, I mean, when you're up there, it, it's a little bit surreal. You know, you don't really know what could happen. And from the season, I think we had a motto is you never know. Because, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, as the designers, we all see everyone's work from the beginning to the end and its glory and its failures and its execution you know, mistakes. So we have different attachments to the garments, whereas the judges just see one 
one fell swoop of it and then it's gone. So they don't know the whole backstory or the designer or the mm-hmm. troubles they may have had or the triumphs. So, you know, we would think, oh, that person's in the top. And then they'd come back and be like, I was in the bottom. And we'd all be shocked. Mm-hmm. So, you know, up there, I just decided, you know, I, I'm standing behind my original concept, but I'm, I'm fully owning up to the mistakes that I made. And, you know, that's all I could do at that point. And it is, I knew it was going to be in the judge's hands. And at that point I couldn't do anything to change my product. I could just say, you know, I accept my mistakes and I'm grateful for the opportunity and experience and the feedback that you gave me. Cause ultimately, you know, I came out of there with so many inspirations and, so many new ideas and a different designer. And I'm, I'm so grateful for that actually. So, you know, I feel like I won because, you know, my, my newest collection that I'm putting out, I feel like is better than all the ones, all the other ones I put out in the past. And, you know, that, that was my goal. So even though I didn't achieve my ultimate goal of going farther, I did achieve one goal of growing as a designer. So. Now for you, out of all the contestants on the show, who did you connect with the most? Um, actually, I connected with uh, Amanda Perna the most. Mm-hmm. She, uh, we did a group challenge together. We are very like-minded people. <laughs> um, I think it, it'll, not only as a designer do I respect her, I respect her as a strong woman. I respect her as a beautiful person. And, you know, everyone on there is very talented and extremely cool, and I'm grateful for getting to know all of them. But Amanda and I, I, th- I think we'll be lifelong friends. Oh, that's that's a great thing to come out of the experience as well. And last but not least, what advice would you give to an up-and-coming designer that's looking to audition for Project Runway? I would say that, you know, be prepared to never know what's going to happen. You know, whatever you think, whatever preconceived notion you have about the show, it will blow you out of the water. (laughs) You will be totally wrong. And anything you think you can get done or you think you know, you probably don't. So go in, be yourself, and and don't, uh, you know, I got really nervous and felt very, you know, I, I never felt comfortable enough. I never got used to the feeling of being there. I, I was too inside my head, like, this is a competition. I have to do good. I have to do good. And, you know, if you go in there and just do your best and don't stress about all the other things going around you, I think you could, I think any emerging designer can do fantastic if they have that mindset. It's just important to, you know, keep the noise out of your head, you know, so you Mm. can think clearly and do your best work, which is hard to do in that environment. I think everyone struggles with that. You know, I I have... There's so many hurdles, you know. I I said that was my last question, but this question I do have because it just came to my mind. When you guys are actually in the room and and you're sewing and you're under pressure, do they call you out? from that moment to do your interviews? Cause I was wondering how frustrating would that be if you're like in the middle and you're in your process and then they say, okay, we need you to come out Gabrielle. Cause we need to, you know, do an interview real quick. Do they ever do that? And is yes, it frustrating? Yes, they do that. <laughs> and it's, it's always frustrating because you know, it's, it's for some reason it's, it's always poorly timed. You know, I, mm-hmm. I know the producers don't do it on purpose, but pretty much any time is a bad time when you have such little time to complete a garment. And on top of that, you know, could, Tim's critiques go very long as well. Mm. So, you know, one of the, the pitfalls was if you saw Tim later in the day, which happened to me actually on the last uh, challenge, you know, I was waiting for him for so long to get, you know, his feedback. You don't want to go too far and have him say, this is horrible, start <laughs> over. And you're so far, you know, in the process that you're like, well, now I don't have any fabric left and uh, my garment's, you know, three quarters of the way finished. <laughs> this might be difficult to you know, make it work into a different garment. Mm. So that that's a challenge as well. You know, the, the scheduling is difficult too because, you know, if you see Tim early in the day, you've got a good, a good strong idea of where you're going. If you see him later in the day, the models come in like 10 minutes later mm. and, you know, you're only so far done. So it, it's, it's challenging to, to deal with those different hurdles. You know, for me, if, if I could have my pick, I would have gone earlier. But again, you just have to take what you're given and make it work. And that was my struggle. I never got comfortable enough not having that control. I'm used to controlling my world. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and Project <laughs> Runway, you don't control it. 
So. Good. I'm so glad you answered that question because I was always wondering because I know I would be frustrated, especially if you're already frustrated working on your garment, then they need to talk to you. So thank you for answering that. And Gabrielle, thank you so much for coming on the show. And I want to remind the audience to make sure that you tune in Thursday nights to Project Runaway Season 14 on Lifetime, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, if you're like me, I have, thank God, Direct TV, so I get to watch it at 6 p.m. <laughs> Uh, on West Coast time, which is great. So again, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks so much for having me. Have a great day. You too. Great talking to you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.